Now, how does Stable Diffusion 3 actually perform? So I carried out about a couple of hundred renders and out of those ones, this was one of about a dozen that were good or acceptable at least. And maybe about, maybe about half a dozen that were actually good. Now this one is of the monster from Mary Sher Shelley's Frankenstein. And uh, the creature is supposed to be kind of looking fairly, he's trying to be friendly, he's, try, he's an intelligent guy, and he's neither, uh, neither alive nor dead, he's been resuscitated or put together by the doctor. He's supposed to be an intelligent guy, trying to fit into the world, but looking kind of lonely. So the prompt was very, very specific, uh, and it prompted based on Mary Shelley's original depiction of Frankenstein, not the comic book or the movie Frankenstein. And I felt that the image actually came out very well. The lights at the side here do not appear very, you can tell that they're not exactly realistic, but everything apart from the very edges, maybe over here, there's some, so a little bit of confusion about what's going on there. But for the most part, the image actually looks quite good. The eyes just look weird but the eyes are supposed to be just fairly normal white looking eyes, not something glowing. I don't know why it does that. But the rest of the prompt I felt was a fairly accurate attempt to depict the, the Frankenstein's monster in a street, street somewhere in the region where the monster was created. So this is the kind of image where I'm testing the ability for it to, sh we, we can see it does pretty good reality and realism. But what about fantasy? Frankenstein's monster was okay. This one was supposed to be a vampire and the vampire doesn't have any fangs. You, you can literally just put in fangs as much as you want. It produces this kind of gothic looking woman, never any fangs. I actually put in Dracula, uh, vampire fangs, and it just produces a guy with a nice smile. <laughs> and uh, it, it's not so good for fantasy unless you're very specific and it somehow knows that particular idea. This is supposed to be an image of a, an, a floating island with a runway and a, and a plane next to it. It, 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 it doesn't work and I don't know why uh, it, it doesn't work, but every other, every other SDXL Dali 3, they all produce a floating island. This guy here just, just could not do it. Now I changed, changed the prompt to say that the island was 300 feet off the ground, a couple of hundred meters, and it it lifted it, it sort of, it was originally down in the center and it moved it up towards the horizon, but it can't produce fantasy in the way that SDXL and SD 1.5 can. This is a prompt that I try with most, most images, most image creators. And with this one, it kind of almost worked. It's supposed to be a portal and you're supposed to see a very different city in the background, something which looks so different that you can tell that this is a portal, not just a mirror. However, we've got the destruction on the outside. We've got a really pleasant looking city in the inside, but we've got a little bit of destruction here. So it's kind of confusing whether you are looking through maybe a kind of shattered window where, or shattered mirror where you're seeing the city behind us. The sky is different, so maybe it is a portal, but it could be a mirror. It could be just a reflection of where the girl was behind where the girl is standing, except we can't see her reflection. She's got one, two, three legs, this kind of nonsense. This is the problem with this particular model. It never produces a perfect image. Always the image, there's something wrong with it. This is probably the best of the attempt. And you can see here, apart from the fact that we might be not seeing a reflection, it does look maybe like it's a portal into a different place, but nowhere near as successful as other attempts that I've tried. So this is a simple painting with a girl in a blue dress. It looks kind of okay. The freckles are kind of wild and unrealistic. The paint brush technique, you can see that. And the, the, this kind of weird gr grotesque brush strokes at the edges, which I didn't, uh, I didn't prompt for, and they appeared on several images. So I don't know why that was, but it kind of spoiled what was otherwise a nearly successful image. And on this image as well, th there's a problem with the, with the edges. Now this is a landscape image and it generally speaking prefers square images. 
you can go portrait or landscape, but when you go strong into the landscape, this is about 16 by nine, it does produce weirdnesses at the end. And no matter how I prompted to try to, no matter how much I used the framework, the workflow to try to limit the amount of harm that was being created by the by the aspect ratio, it never cured the problem. So this is something that Dolly 3 can do very, very easily. I suspect for us to try this inside of Stable Cascade, it will probably do a lot better job as well. This is a mechanical pug. And this is something where it's a clockwork dog and we've got this spare foot there, the spare paw. We've got this kind of grotesque stuff at the, at the sides. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. So you get a lot of stuff at the edges that just doesn't make any sense. I did like the, the, the map. The map looked quite good. The, this is one of a number that I did of the mechanical pug, and this was the only one that even came close. The, the, the foot would need to be edited to, to make it look good though. Now, one thing I did like was the tendency to create realistic detail uh, or realistic textures and realistic looking skin. Now, you can see almost a photographic kind of grain happening here. That was something I really liked. Let me just pause there for a second. And you can see it throughout this image here. It makes it look like an old digital camera film. And then we have this weirdness with the limbs going on. And that kind of weirdness ha happens. This this guy here, his, his hand, it's otherwise almost a perfect image, but the limbs are always disgusting and sort of weirdly shaped. It's really kind of morbid to look at these images. You don't want to look at them too long because almost all of them have got something weird repulsive, disgusting happening. And it really spoils what, what would otherwise be a really nice image. Once again, we've got that nice texture, that nice photographic texture. Sometimes this breaks down. Most of the time it actually looks good. And this is Count Dracula. You can kind of tell it's Count Dracula, but you haven't got the, f the fangs. No matter how hard you, you prompt for the Dracula fangs, they don't come through. And this is supposed to be a woman breastfeeding. And no matter, how, <laughs> uh, it looks like the baby is growing out of the woman's chest. And no matter how hard, no matter how often I prompted for a woman breastfeeding, it always produced these weird distorted images. This is the least distorted. Some of them were pretty disgusting, pretty re revolting to look at. So th th there seems to be something happening where it won't produce certain types of images. All of the breastfeeding images, the baby was not breastfeeding. The woman looked sometimes beaten up and the limbs disgusting, distorted. It was weird. And almost every image is like this. Very, very few images actually worked. And finishing off on a positive note, this is like one of the half dozen images that actually worked. Now, this is the kind of thing you can get inside of any stock library, any stock image library. And with that, with that stock image library, all of the quality control is done for you before you download the image. So you're not seeing grotesque, horrible looking, distorted monsters, which this this particular model, it absolutely produces those. I'm not going to show you because they're so disgusting, but the occasional image comes out well. It, it just doesn't justify the investment in time. You definitely don't want to purchase hardware to use this particular model even though it does come with one very large, about 16 gigabyte model, I wouldn't want to encourage you to purchase a powerful graphics card to process these because most of the time they're going to look horrible. Now it's possible that some third parties may make some good quality versions of the model. I really want to see that. I, I really hope that they succeed with doing that. But the original model, the original Stable Cascade, Stable Diffusion 3 medium, is way worse than the large, the 8 billion parameter model. And it's, it's a huge disappointment. We'll end on this beautiful image here. I would probably go and get something like this from Adobe stock, probably spend a lot less time than, than trying to manufacture it inside of Stable Diffusion 3M. And if I wanted to, I'll go and use SDXL or even SD 1.5.